I'm a biologist by background. I studied biology because I was interested in animals and plants. And when I was studying it at Cambridge, I began to have terrible doubts about what I was doing because everything that really interested me about animals and plants somehow vanished when I got into the biochemistry laboratories. I was majoring in biochemistry and I did a PhD in biochemistry there. Um, but there's a curious thing about biochemistry. You're doing biochemistry to study the molecular basis of life. Yet the very first thing you do in the laboratory is kill whatever you're studying, grind it up, extract the enzymes, and then in a test tube, study the properties of some of these molecules extracted from this killed organism. And it began to occur to me that perhaps this wasn't the best way to understand life. Um, but I didn't quite know what to do about it because everybody else thought it was definitely was the best way to study life and in fact there was no other valid way. Um, so this set me thinking and I began to see that um, the science of biology could be reformed, uh, that this idea that living organisms are truly alive rather than being just machines, that's the official doctrine, the mechanistic theory says living organisms are just complicated machines. Um, believe it or not, still the official doctrine of academic biology and academic medicine. Uh, these ideas went on developing. I then saw how I could bring them all together in a synthesis and in, into a new, new way of seeing how biology could be done. And I wrote a book while still in India called A New Science of Life. In it, the basic idea I'm suggesting is that there's a kind of inherent memory in all kinds of animals and plants. Each species has its own collective memory. So each member of the species draws on this collective memory and in turn contributes to it. The instincts of animals, for example, the behavior of cuckoos, the spinning of webs by spiders, are like a memory, a habit of the species. This inheritance takes place by the process I call morphic resonance, by a kind of invisible, intangible memory a kind of resonance between present and past organisms of the same kind. The same theory helps explain how our own memory works by a resonance between our own past and our present states. It leads to the idea that our memories aren't stored in our brains, but that we're tuning into them by this process of morphic resonance.